Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we now have all of the science unlocked. Our uh our KSC is looking a little bit patchy. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. We could definitely use spending some money on upgrades and I wouldn't mind fully upgrading a few of these things. We've got a few of them fully upgraded as is, but I think that we just max out our KSC at this point. It's going to cost us some cash for sure. But we get that fully upgraded. We get our space plane hangar fully upgraded. Not like that's strictly necessary. Get our mission control fully upgraded as well. And our runway. Yeah, that spends a lot of cash. But I'm not concerned about cash at this point. So there's everything fully upgraded. We've got all the science. And that is fantastic. Let's hop into mission control and see what we've got available here. Is there anything here that we really want to do as part of what we're planning on doing anyway? Explore the sun. Dock two vessels on or around the sun. Rendezvous two vessels in orbit of sun. Probably not. Okay. So, one thing that I want to check. Do ISRUs make xenon gas? I think they can. I was just thinking about what we want to do with asteroids, and I was like, it would take a ridiculously long time to push an asteroid with ion engines, right? But it would also be hugely efficient. Like, it's a dumb concept, and we probably shouldn't do it. But it's a funny idea. For now, I think we want to send, like, a survey mission to an asteroid. Now, I believe we can't enter orbit around asteroids. I don't think that they have a gravitational sphere of influence in KSP. That is something that we could find out, though. So we could make ourselves a bit of a science probe here. And we could head over to an asteroid and just see what we can find out about it. So for now, I think we'll go with a remote guidance unit. And a small remote guidance unit is absolutely fine. We don't need a lot here. As far as science experiments go, honestly, we don't need a lot there either. We don't actually need science. I am going to take a thermometer, but that is only so that we can do contracts if we want to. So we're going to grab a two-hot thermometer, and we'll just place that here. That's fine. Okay, we're going to need some power here. A Z200 is the correct size. Looks good. I'm going to put a docking port on this just in case. I'm not necessarily planning on docking anything here. But uh, that's a just-in-case sort of thing. And then we're going to put a couple of Xenon fuel tanks onto this thing. Uh, Xenon is down here. And this is the correct radius. Fantastic. And we'll put a engine on here. That will be a single Dawn electric propulsion engine. And the question is, how much power do we need for that? So to run that, we need 8.74. We should, we should aim for having at least 10 electric charge here. So as far as our electricity goes, we could go for 1x5 photovoltaic panels. I think 0x10C, or OX10Cs rather, is probably what we want to think about going for. So we would mount those like here. I just think they look cool. <laughs> there we go. We'll retract those. And that's basically our probe. We're not going to do too much with it, in all honesty. Let's see. In order to clamp onto an asteroid... It seems like we needed a uh, advanced grabbing unit, actually. So maybe we should grab an advanced grabbing unit instead of the docking port. We could try to clamp onto the asteroid. That's a thing we could do. Now, we're not going to be able to do much with it there, right? We could try to have, like, an ISRU on there or something like that. I mean, a Convertitron 125 is the smallest that we've got, and it's... If I recall correctly, it's just objectively bad to use a 125, and you should always use the 250 based on the way the math works. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So, a 250 would be huge, right? We're not going to be bringing that. This mission is mostly just a survey mission to try to figure out what exactly we've got going on here. So, I think for now, this will do just fine, and we will put in a decoupler. This is not a decoupler. We need like a uh, TD-12 is too big. A TD-6? Yes. Something like that. Now we're going to want a maneuvering stage of some sort. 
So for this, we could do like a uh, fuel adapter, not this fuel adapter, not this fuel adapter. I can tell you that this fuel adapter is maybe a little ridiculous. This is for going to what? Like Rockamax? Not even. This is for going to like uh Kerbidine, of course, is way too big. I'm not sure what this is. Well, FLA-150s. Okay, that's an FLA-150 there, but that's not the size we're looking for. The size that we are looking for is the very smallest one up to this size. That's what I'd like to see. Of course, we're going to need a fairing here too, and we should put in a fairing. That is absolutely the case. This will be just a small fairing shell. Uh, this is going to need to be moved up the solar panels are. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll just grab those and move them up to be like here. That's probably fine. And I'm going to move the thermometer as well, as long as we're at it. I don't necessarily want the thermometer to be here. This is not... Wait. Yeah, it's right there. Just can't select it from here. Maybe from this angle? Yes. Okay, so we'll move it over like that. There we go. And we'll try to build this fairing. So, let's see how this goes. Okay, it's a little awkward, but it's fine. Oh, we don't have communications on this. Communications are going to be important, and we don't need two thermometers. Okay, so for communications, this would not need to be a relay satellite. We would need a fairly beefy antenna. I mean, an RA-100 would be ideal, but that thing is massive. So we would probably want to go for... An HG-55 is also pretty massive. Like, I don't think that's necessary here. 2G is probably good enough, in all honesty. So that would go, like, here, and then it would extend like that. That's probably plenty. Okay, so our second stage here, I do still want a fuel adapter. So what do we got here? We've got the NCS adapter, and I think this is actually the guy that we want. So let's do that, and then do we need more fuel than this? Actually, let's see if this is the correct size first. So I want the T-800s, uh, these guys over here. No, that's the TX-1800. That's the T-800. So the T-400, yeah, this is the correct size. So the engines, we would then want to have, like, a Terrier. And, I mean, this is going to be quite a lot of Delta V. No doubt about that. I mean, this is this is going to be overkill, for sure. So we're going to not need more than this in our second stage. I can tell you that right now. We are going to then go into a uh, decoupler. That's what we need. My mind went blank for a moment there, but we need a TD-12. And we could go for a T-800, and we could use a vector on this if we really wanted to. I feel like that would be wildly overkill in terms of thrust to weight. We could see. So, like, if we were to do a pair of T-800s here, or even a trio of T-800s, I mean, this is way more than we need, I'm pretty sure. We drop that. Hypothetically, I doubt that I'm going to do a vector here, but hypothetically, what would a vector look like? 5.56 <laughs> thrust to weight on the ground. Oof. Like, completely, completely dry. 25 second burn. Yeah, vectors are extremely fuel hungry, so that's not shocking. We're not going to go for that. I was never planning to. Let's try just a good old-fashioned T45. Like, this is pretty old-fashioned tech at this point for us. 1.17. It's okay. This thing is fairly economical. We could definitely get some side boosters to bring that up a bit. Just use some SRBs here. And what would we want? Some maybe... Pollux's would probably be overkill. Kickbacks? That's still overkill. Thumpers, maybe. Maybe a bit on the small side. So do that something like this. What would that thrust to weight look like? 2.26. So that's that's fine. We would definitely want to mount these more like this, and then we'd want to grab the actual decoupler. 
We could bring this down. Now we could also liquid fuel this if we wanted to. We could do liquid fueled side stages. We haven't done that like at all in this series. Let's do it. It's just a bit of a change of pace. So we'd grab a couple of T800s here. Like so. It's going to be more expensive to liquid fuel it. That's for sure. It's also less good than it used to be because it used to be that SRBs didn't gimbal. And so you'd do something like this in order to have gimbaling. That's less necessary these days. But I mean, this is still going to be pretty overkill. Actually, 1.44. That's not that overkill. I expected this to be a little more powerful than this, but it's going to be a very, very long burn. There's no doubt about that. And we are also going to want to run a fuel duct here. So the fuel duct would connect from the outside to the inside. So fuel flows this way. Because we want to empty these tanks first. We're going to want aerodynamic nose cones on here. Like so. And then we'd also want some fins on here for sure. Uh, we'll look at the center of mass and aerodynamic overlay. So tail fins are probably overkill for this. The, the tail fins that we've been using previously. Realistically, this is definitely overkill. This is like hilarious levels of overkill. Oh yeah, that's reasonable. <laughs> that's absolutely reasonable. So, we'd want to go with probably something a little bit more like the Delta Deluxe winglet, if I had to guess. And then we'd mount those somewhere like here. Even those are a little bit on the big side. And we would need struts as well. So we would put a strut connector right here. That's awkward. I guess we would put the strut connector here and connect it like this. Weird. The uh, symmetry was acting very strange there. Well, overall, this should be absolutely fine. 1.41 thrust weight is definitely a little bit on the low side. We could swap out these swivels with Reliance, and Reliance would be slightly better for that. 1.64. Yep, that would do the trick. In theory, this should be fine. So let's go ahead and launch this, and we're going to just kind of pick an asteroid and head there. Now, I'm not expecting to do too much with that asteroid. I mostly want to experiment around with some of the things that we can do and get ourselves a, not really a relay satellite, because this isn't a relay satellite, but get ourselves some form of communications on that. Now that I think about it, maybe it should be a relay satellite. That said, that wouldn't necessarily be a thing. But I at least want to get us a, ourselves a solid tracker on that that asteroid. So let's go ahead and get out of here. And off we go. Pretty good off the pad. A little bit sluggish control right now, but that's okay. We're not too shocked about that. We're just going to head on over here. And see about getting ourselves some horizontal speed. We've drifted off the 90 degree heading, and we'll try to fix that a bit. Emphasis on a bit. <laughs> okay. Something along the lines of that-ish. Current apoapsis. Wait, we have KER on this? I guess this, uh... What am I looking for? It's not a pod. I'm guessing this robotics control module is good enough to have a built-in KER. That's kind of neat, if true. So we're going to be running out of fuel in our side tanks very soon, but note that we've not burned any fuel in our center tank. Okay, I'm going to hold here. Side tanks are out of here. Excellent. And at this time, we are just heading over to the horizon. There we go. We'll try to hold here for the moment. And continue our burn. So we've got a lot of fuel left here. We're at about 33 kilometers. There we go. 
And we can see our apoapsis is 50 kilometers and time to apoapsis is holding steady right now. So that's actually good for us. That's it. And now it's going up. So we know that we're going to have to coast a bit, but we always knew that. That's completely fine. That is exactly expected. So we'll just hold here on this heading. And we'll continue burning here until our apoapsis height is, I don't know, maybe like 80 kilometers. 80 would be plenty. Sure, sounds good to me. This is a pretty decent ascent profile, I think. Yeah, seems good. 70 kilometers right now, and there's 80. So we'll coast now for a bit, and at this apoapsis, you can see how much horizontal speed we have. At this apoapsis, we will add a maneuver, and we will just circularize, like that. 166 meters per second. I like it. We're just going to lock prograde for the moment. And we can also ditch our Airstream protective shell. We no longer need to be carrying that weight. And I guess we can combine these stages together. That's completely fine. But look at how much Delta V we have in this thing. It's absurd. We have too much Delta V, one might argue. One could definitely make that argument that we have too much Delta V in this thing. But yeah, overall, that was a solid ascent profile. I'm pretty happy with that. Single stage to orbit, kind of. Definitely not. This is not a single stage to orbit. It's one of those technically correct, if you include a bunch of caveats and redefine a, t a few terms sorts of statements. <laughs> I like it. We're going to physics warp for now until we are out of the atmosphere. We're still coasting in the atmosphere. But we will be exiting Atmo here in a moment. Two kilometers to go. One kilometer. And we are out. Okay, now we're going to head over to the maneuver node, and the reason we weren't doing this before is because I didn't want to cause additional drag if I could at all help it. The X-Science window can be moved, and we're going to extend our photovoltaic panels now. There we go. And our burn is going to be in about two minutes. We'll just get positioned for that with a physics warp. And then we will regular warp. These are not retractable, correct? Correct. That could be awkward if we come in at a strange angle. I should have thought of that and placed them further back. Yeah, that probably should have been a thing. But this is just a probe, right? We, we don't actually care that much. We're going to make this burn happen in about five seconds. Two, one, zero. And circularization is happening now. This is close enough. We don't need to be any closer than this. And at this point, we just want a gravity assist around the moon. So we will set that as our target for the time being. And we'll burn sometime around... We don't need to set it as our target, but we'll burn sometime around... Not here. No, nope, not going normal. Thank you very much. We'll instead be burning sometime around here. Are we going to crash into the moon? Slightly, yeah. So we should probably back off on that a little bit. There we go, a 20 kilometer periapsis, and that's an escape for 862 meters per second. We've seen better escapes, and we could probably fine tune that a little bit, but this is good enough. It's not like we're short on Delta V in this monstrosity. We actually have enough Delta V to do our entire moon flyby procedure on this stage, for the record. And this is why I didn't want to go up to, <laughs> um, what, what am I thinking? The, the bigger one, the one with the main sail. It's, it's not Kerbidine, it's the other one. Rockamax, that's it. <laughs> Words are very hard. That's why I didn't want to go up to Rockamax size. It would have been just absolute overkill. This Even this is quite a lot of overkill. So that's fine. We're going to warp until we are going to escape here. Oh, and we should uh, deploy our Communitron before we actually leave. That would help. So we're going to get that deployed as well. We'll extend that antenna. Perfect. We'll position for this burn. And we've got about 30 seconds until then. That is fine. 10 seconds. Five seconds. And burn. 
And off we go. So yeah, even this thrust weight isn't going to be bad. Like, we're probably never going to actually dip into the Xenon here. Well, we'll be able to, like, push the Asteroid around a bit with it. <laughs> That's not the best of ideas. We also don't have any uh, RCS on this, so we can't do any braking without turning around. So we're mostly using this as a Pathfinder, right? We know there's going to be problems with this. Okay. Let's uh, see how we've what we've got going on here. This is technically acceptable, but it's awful. This is going to take so long to get to. This is good enough. <laughs> okay. So we'll hop back to prograde for now, and we're going to need to warp through this, of course. So we'll go ahead and warp to the moon. Hello, moon. Thanks for the gravity assist. We've still got some... Uh, Delta V here, 69 meters per second. There are some who would likely say nice. That is the exact amount that we've got here entirely by accident. That's fantastic. So we are going to head up over this direction. Thanks for the assist, Moon. Goodbye, Moon. You were very helpful. Okay, we're back over Kerbin. And we're going to need to pick an asteroid. So, first things first, we will hop out over... Where's our actual escape at? Actually, where's our actual orbit at? Here. We're going to have a Kerbin encounter in 15 years at this rate. Hilarious. That's a year away. Okay. So, we just kind of need to pick an asteroid here. Class A, Class C. Actually, we could go with a tiny asteroid. View in tracking station. Why is that the only option? That's interesting. Do we have to, like, focus some sort of, uh... Do we have to focus the scope on it? Oh, this is Untitled Spacecraft. I never actually named it. Let's go ahead and hop into the scope. And let's see if we can interact with one of these. I can't remember how to do this. Been a long time since we've done an asteroid intercept mission. So, let's take a look at... Those are size E. This one. View and tracking station. Okay, so we can't do anything with the scope. What can we do with the tracking station? Not a whole lot, actually. Well, we don't currently see it. And that might have something to do with it. I think what I need to do is research how exactly we need to uh, scan these. I can't remember the exact technique for doing it. It's it's not going to be complicated. Like, I've done it before. I just don't remember how we actually survey these. I need to look up the correct part, and uh, we might need to send up another scope. But for now, I think this is completely fine. That might be a mission for next episode to get that done. So we will go ahead and do that, and I will just uh, put in a cut here. And we can use this same probe to go to the one that we end up going to. It's just a little awkward in terms of the order. I've just forgotten how to interact with asteroids. It's been a very long time. We'll get there in the end. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible. Including Casserol, Sigma162, JJ Gamer, Spartan News, Rose Valentine, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.